What's up guys, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, we're gonna be making an attachment for my grinder. Now the surface grinder attachments that the company that uh, made my two x 72 grinder, the ones it sells are about 800 range, 900 range, thousand dollars around that area. And that's kind of uh, expensive. Ooh, thunder. That's kind of expensive. So I'm trying to always do make my tools on a budget because I want to be able to spend that money on material so I can make more knives. So I'm going to be making this build, which is inspired by the video that uh, Tyrell Knifeworks made, um, which will be in the description down below. He goes over it in a lot more detail than I'm going to. So I definitely recommend going and checking out his page. But it's based off of that with some minor adjustments that I'm doing for my machine and uh, let's uh, get into it so here I have everything that I need for it this is the tooling arm that the company that uh, made that grinder sells so I'm gonna be using this guy this guy cost me $38 plus shipping I ended up ordering two just to save on that shipping the shipping was like 30 bucks 20 bucks so I just ordered two and I have one on standby for future projects because I know I'm gonna need one eventually so might as well this guy right here, we're, we're gonna call this guy 50 bucks. So this guy right here cost me, I wanna say about $100. I don't remember, I'll fat check and I'll put it right here, the price. But yeah, this guy cost me 50 bucks off of Amazon. Links to anything will either be provided on here or you can always go check out Tyrell's video which has everything listed in his description. And this guy right here as well off of Amazon cost me like a hundred bucks as well around there I got this wheel from house made house made from uh, Brian house made from his company and it, it's very very affordable for a good quality wheel with serration so it doesn't heat up as much and uh, this is a four inch wheel and it cost me 65 bucks with free shipping in the United States which is pretty nice there's just a whole bunch of bolts and stuff which will be in the description down below all the all the parts you need to put it together and this is a magnet that I bought from uh, from Tyrell it's an 18 inch mag magnet mag chuck magnet chuck and uh, I don't I do not have a mill to make it so I decided just to buy it off of him it's a very very strong magnet and it'll get the job done I went with an 18 inch this is all for the 18 inch I went with an 18 inch because I'm if I'm gonna build it and spend the money I might as well get the bigger one because I know I have bigger knives than you know the 12 inch uh, than a 12 inch one so I got this guy and this is quarter inch flat bar three inch wide by 18 inch long I'll be using that as part of the build as well and that's pretty much everything that I need to get this guy going so let's get started all right guys so here I have my tooling arm this is the tooling arm, arm that I buy from OPM, which is the company that makes this grinder. And here, as you can see, it is threaded. I don't know if you can see very well, but it's threaded. Not all companies have threaded. Some have a, a, just a pass-through hole for half an inch. There's a half inch bolt, but I can't use it because of the thread. It doesn't let it pass through all the way because this is threaded. And I need some extra sticking out here so that I can uh, attach the other pieces on afterwards. I, now, I'm not saying all this because I bought this and I can't use it now, but went on ahead and bought one of these. Now, this is just uh, threaded all the way through, so it should be able to go all the way in, no problem. And I'll have enough sticking out on the other end. But first, I'm going to be using these spacers. These are nylon spacers that also. OPM cells and I'm using this because on my four inch wheel it's gonna sit right there on the bearing and uh, help it, help hold it so that it's not uh, being pressed against the screw and since it just holds on the actual bearing part it doesn't impede anything so I'm gonna put one of these in here first you can use a small washer as well or just take a regular washer and grind it down to the right size I'm gonna pass it on through there and I'll put one on the other side. Now to get this roughly right there, which is where I'm gonna want it, I'm gonna have to space it out with something. I don't have actual spacers like this right here that is 
roughly the, 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 the right size. So I'm just gonna use uh, washers to fill in the gap. So nine washers just about does it. So I'm gonna go on ahead and thread it through and we're gonna go on ahead and check. Threading it by hand, cause I don't wanna damage any on the th of the threads on the inside. So I'm just gonna get it there by hand. So here we go. Now I'm gonna set it up there. It's pretty much right where we want it. I'm using this guy as a guide because this is exactly where this should be. So using that guy as a guide, I think we're okay right here. All right guys, so next step is attaching our axis onto this piece of mild steel. Just gonna center it roughly. It's just slightly over, just slightly bigger, probably by a quarter, not even, maybe an eighth bigger than, than my actual bar, which is fine. And I'm just gonna Go on ahead and center it and make sure I'm just gonna be bolting four four bolts through so I gotta make sure those are visible. This is a qu they're quarter inch hole, so I'm gonna take a quarter inch drill bit and and uh, drill the hole right through. Alright guys, so I got two clamps on it holding it just snug and I'm gonna drill my holes. All right guys, so the holes are made, the screws are in, but as you can see, the head doesn't fall in because, get this guy out. It's supposed to inset go inside, but it doesn't because it's smaller than the head. So we're gonna go on ahead and grind a little bit off so it can fall in there. So we can tighten it because it has no clearance in here for it to travel, so it has to be inside. So let's grind these down. All right, guys. So all the screws fit in there nicely now, nice and flat. Everything can move around. Now that's we're gonna use some lock uh, lock nuts. Use some lock nuts with the ones with the nylon in them to hold them in place. All right, guys. So next part is we're gonna be attaching this attaching this to the arm so the way to do that is to find where we need to go mark it drill a hole in the center and then we can start working on that one issue i ran into because i'm using a four inch wheel instead of the recommended six inch wheel i'm gonna have to grind off some of the front of this uh this tooling arm which isn't a big issue because we want our wheel to cover, go over this line right here by at least around a quarter of an inch. Why? That way everything's always going to be sitting nice and close and we're making maximum use of everything. So I ran into that little issue where this does not reach because this is a four inch wheel. The one that Dennis made um, is a six inch wheel so it's about an inch farther back. So we, he doesn't run into that issue but since I'm using a four inch wheel I need mine to go even farther forward in. So I'm just gonna grind three eighths off of the front of this. That gives me the eighth I'm missing to get to here and another quarter to make it overlap. Fortunately, I just gotta take it to a two by 72 and press it up against it on a 36 grit belt and problem solved. If you don't wanna have this problem, get a six inch wheel. If you have the tools for it, get yourself a four inch wheel, they're cheaper. Or if you're making your own tooling arm, just make sure that you Take into account that distance if you're using a four inch wheel. All right, let's grind this down. All right, guys, so now that I've grounded it, I probably, it's probably an eighth shorter than I said I was gonna grind it, but no big deal. If I need to grind more, I will. So now this guy definitely goes past it about, about an eighth or three sixteenths, which should be plenty. So now I just gotta take, since so this guy's gonna butt, butt up to it, I just need to take that rough measurement like so and mark it in the center and drill a hole right there for this guy to pass it through i'm gonna do a 3 8 hole right here that's the size of, uh, that my tooling arm requires so I'll go ahead and do that all right guys so it's all pretty much set up roughly where it needs to go that's pretty good this guy the only thing now is that let me pull up the piece for you guys this guy this rail is gonna sit on this guy right here. So, I 
as you can see. This guy's gonna sit on this guy right here. So as you can see, it's part of the belt's gonna be hitting it. So we're gonna have to shim this out this way a little bit, probably. Looks like a quarter. Looks like it's about a quarter. So I'm just gonna shim both bolts out this way and that should solve the problem. All right, I just put two washers in there and it looks like we're good to go. We have just the tiniest of gaps. But as long as it's not underneath, it's not going to be binding into the rail, so we're good there. Now, we got to attach this guy to here. All right, so this guy is going to get the M6 screws, 16 millimeter ones. They fit on there right nice and good. I took this guy and I just bumped it up to it, roughly where I found the center of this guy would be. And then I measured back. 3 8 to the center of this guy. Go ahead and measure again to show you guys. That we got a rough 3 8 to center right there. So since it's 3 8 to center. Alright, there we go. So since it's 3 8 to center, I pulled back and I marked the 3 8 back roughly where that's going to be. We're going to draw a quarter inch hole there. And then, then we're going to drill a quarter inch hole. And then I'm going to go with a 3 8 drill bit. And go ahead and uh, countersink it. So that uh, the head can go down underneath. Just so it will fit in there nice and flush. So it won't be hitting the rail system. Guys, okay, so my holes are drilled. Now the heads of these guys do not fit in here. And we need them to be pretty much flush. So same thing, I'm going to start grinding them so I can fit them in there. Alright guys, so my holes were slightly off so I had to dig around to get them roughly where I wanted them. So I only put on three. This one still needs to go a little bit farther this way. But with these bearings in the way, it was kind of hard to measure. That's going to be my excuse for my horrible holes. But that'll hold. Hopefully you do way better than me. Next part. We're going to slide this guy in there. And act like that doesn't exist anymore. There we go. So now we can uh, get our slide in. So next thing is I need to cut down this excess. Uh, hope this is fall. Cut off the excess from this. So I'm just gonna think I'm just gonna flip it around, take a grinder to it. That way I don't have to take everything else apart. We'll see. Alright guys, so next up we're going to be attaching the magnetic chuck to the rail. This guy, like I said before, is an 18 inch magnetic chuck I got from, uh, I bought from Tyro Knife Works. And it already comes uh, with the holes drilled for it on here. So we just got to drill the holes here. These are going to be 3 8 holes for... 3-8 uh, bolts, so we're just going to have to, we're going to mirror the holes and then we're going to, we're going to drill our 3 8 hole through here and then we're going to countersink it to make sure this guy fits. We're probably going to have to grind an angle on the bottom of this as well to make everything fit nice and flush so nothing hits on the rails. Alright guys, so it's all attached, pretty simple you get to go I put on a half inch bolt here that's what the it's probably four inch half inch bolt is going to be our handle this just uh, drilled a half inch hole no need to counter seek or anything and put a bolt yeah I'll show you put a bolt on each side and you're good to go doesn't matter you can act as a stopper in case you know you reach the end of your slide and you can use this part to slide it in whenever you use it the bolts are in. Only thing I had to do was align this bolt that wasn't quite exactly where it needed to be. It wasn't a big deal. It was off by like maybe 16th. So I just threw a half, uh, 3 8 drill bit and I just drilled, followed that. Drilled, made the, uh, the hole on this guy. Uh, match this and we're good to go. Fit perfectly. And that's about it. Oh, as well as on this side. 
I went on ahead and hit them with the angle grinder and just make a slot in case they wanted to spin on me. And uh, I could put a flathead screwdriver there to hold it in place while I tightened them. I didn't need them. I didn't have any spin, but it's good to have just in case. You never know. So, we're pretty good. Time to start assembling everything together. Alright guys, so it's all put together pretty well. We have some spots that touch, like right here it touches. But then more towards the end, it's not touching. So, we're going to... The way we fix that is we're going to grind a little bit of the aluminum off so that it uh, touches completely. So these, the aluminum the, is a little bit proud from where the magnets are. They're a little bit more resistant for the, um, and, and since it is resistant, we can get away with grinding off a little bit. Not too much, but we can grind off a little bit. So we're going to do that. There's a 220 grip belt. So I've got it working pretty well. I'm off of it right there. You can get closer onto it. But we're gonna go on ahead and give it a try. I have a scrap piece of Damascus here that's been, I hope it's Damascus. This has just been chilling in, in my scrap bucket for a while. I'm gonna give it a good clean. I'm gonna switch out this belt for a 36. Or I'm gonna switch it out for a 60 grit and we're gonna give this guy a clean and put in some acid and see how See how well it uh, does at cleaning it. And there's definitely different thicknesses as well, so we're gonna try to get it as flat as possible. Alright, so that's pretty good. It was uh, a lot of steel was removed, as you can see right there. It caught a lot of it, which actually is pretty cool because it didn't make as much dust as I expected. Still made some dust, just not as much as I expected. But yeah, now to pry this guy off and, and uh, cool it down. Gonna go on ahead and dip this guy just because I'm curious as to what the mask is it was. Oh, that was pretty quick. I won't say it was a ball bearing uh, Nakiri knife I did. I remember it had big old blobs like that in it. Cool. Good memories. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I'm very happy with the build. If you want an in-depth explanation on uh, how and why this is the way it is, Definitely check out uh, Tyrell's video, Tyrell Knife Works video. Link in the description. And if you want to get one of these uh, four inch wheels, uh, we'll also have a link for uh, Housemade so you can pick one up. And whatever else, uh, other parts and stuff I used on here, I'll let you guys know in the description as well. So, as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate y'all, and I'll catch you on the next one.